any good SQL analog needs to select documents, right? Let's learn how this works in Nickel and take a tour of Query Workbench along the way. So we assume people taking this course have some relational database experience. A relational and document databases are not necessarily as different as you might think. Even though the top level containers are somewhat different and the data model underlying them is different. See, in relational systems, that top level container is an individual database. In Couchbase, it's what we call a bucket. A bucket is an unstructured document container, perhaps more easily thought of as a key space, because the hard physical limits are intentionally few. Document keys must be unique, and the maximum document size is 20 megabytes. Now, in a database, values are structured within tables. In Couchbase, they're most commonly structured within JSON documents. Now, just as a table row represents an individual record, documents are commonly designed to represent an individual record. So then, what's the equivalent of a column? Well, like-named fields within documents can be directly analogized to a column, though with some interesting possibilities. The same field name could be used across documents of different types, opening interesting new possibilities for flexible data access. Now, this notion in turn opens up the common design pattern of assigning an explicit type to each document. Do so, and a set of documents sharing the same type become for many purposes the functional equivalent of a table. Would it make sense to create another table for another entity of some form? Well, create a new type of document. But always remember that each document is potentially different. This flexibility opens up a whole world of rapid development possibilities for systems engaging with rapidly involving inputs and aggregations from many different systems. Now, because your schema is defined by the data structures your code reads and needs and not the system into which it writes, well then, why would you ever have more than one bucket? Well, you can have up to 10 in a given cluster, but there's no firm need to align buckets with applications the way you might with a database. Instead, buckets serve as the boundary for different concerns. They're the level at which you define varying caching, replication, indexing, and security needs. They're also a useful boundary for meeting multi-tenancy requirements. Nickel syntax aims to be as close to ANSI SQL as we can make it while still respecting the distinction of querying JSON documents rather than tables. Now hold in the back of your mind the notion that selecting a field name shared by a common set of documents is analogous to selecting a column from a table. Now just as with SQL, select star selects all fields in the target bucket, which would be a very broad query without some filtering, but we'll get back to that. More likely, you'll select specific field names, using nested references to access multidimensional objects within your documents. You can limit your total results, just as with SQL, so you could have queries such as these, though again, because we reference the full bucket in our from clause rather than the more narrow container known as a table in relational systems, as you'll see ahead, filtering plays a larger role in Nickel than it may in SQL for basic queries such as these. You'll spend a lot of time in Query Workbench in this course. Now, when you are working a Query Workbench, you can choose how you'd like your output displayed, whether as JSON, in tabular form, or as a tree. You can also display the underlying query plan visually or as plain text. You can view, recall, and delete prior queries that you've run. You can examine the flavor or general structure of documents within each bucket, along with whether and how that bucket has been made queryable with full or partial indexing. You can import query text and export both query text as well as results, either as JSON or tab data. You can toggle between Query Workbench and the Query Monitor, which provides performance statistics for long-running queries, and you can copy query results and easily paste them to a spreadsheet. Alternately, you can point the command line CBQ tool at any node in your cluster, provided that you have the necessary credentials to access that node and query the bucket you specify. You can find CBQ in these locations, depending on your operating system. So what have you learned here? Well, most importantly, you see that Nickel is quite familiar once you adapt to the notion of selecting fields from documents in a bucket rather than columns from a table. 
BigQuery Workbench provides a great place for learning this. It'll even display your results as a table for familiarity, or as JSON, or a tree. It will keep track of your query history for iterative editing. It analyzes your documents to give insight into their structure and quickly reference available indexing. It lets you import or export queries and export resulting datasets. Or, if you're the command line type, we've got you covered there too. In this lab, you'll dive into playing around with Nickel with some simple queries. The labs will get more involved as we move along, and there's no need to wait. Dive into your own experiments as soon as you feel comfortable. At its core, Couchbase is a key value system. Document keys are important. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to work with them directly in Nickel.